Um, Richard Hogan says, Pa Dylan smoking in the Hogan stand back in the 60s after beating Tip, I think. That's just back to the, the cigarette companies uh, having their names on the, the cups. But you look at all the uh, lads uh, when they were up getting the, um, the cups in Croke Park having a drag of a fag. Uh, there was some Kilkenny lads involved there. I think Pat Henderson was having a fag and a few more of them some days they were up there. Look, it was uh, it, it, something you wouldn't dream of doing or seeing now. But uh, look, life was very different back in those days. And uh, it's, it's nice to look back and recall them. And, and, and memories like that, they, they just were different times, Shane. And uh, look, we enjoyed them, but we, life has moved on. Yeah, I can even remember my cousin, and this is like maybe within 15 years ago, playing a junior match for, for Burris Lee, and he's not off the field. He's been substituted. He wasn't even off the field, and a lit cigarette has been handed to him coming off. <laughs> like, would you have any memories of that, or even people smoking in the dressing room before and after games? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that would have been, I wouldn't say the norm, but, I mean, it was something that was uh, something that happened periodically. And uh, it's, it's, as I said, things were tolerated back in those days. I mean, you, you would often wonder... And this is a kind of ridiculous statement. If uh, some of the great players back in those days, you know, were to undergo the same sort of training regime as going on today, what might have made them as harder as what? Everything in life evolves, and I suppose uh, you're a lot younger fella than I am now, and it's going to be interesting to see over the next couple of decades how Gaelic games and hurling, as we're talking about now, how it's going to evolve and what's going to be the next big thing. I mean, Limerick have developed a style of play and a running style of play, and and there's, and a, the passing game that uh, has certainly brought them to the forefront. It's been key to that. Now, they're, they're brilliant hurlers anyway. Now, what's going to be the next evolution of that and, and, and what coach is going to come up with that to, to, uh, to better that? So I think it's, it's, a, it's fascinating to look at it. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see over the next number of decades how the game is going, is going to evolve and uh, hopefully grow. But, but that's probably still going to be, despite everybody's wishes, it's probably still going to be the remit of the... The, the six or seven that will be still the dominant teams at the top end of it. But that doesn't mean that the other levels are not important as well. And, you know, when you talk about, you know, the difference in preparation these days versus 20, 30 and 40 years ago, I mean, players' lifestyles were different back then. There was a lot more manual work. There was a lot more farm work. Lads were probably lean as butchers' dogs from being out, you know, dragging stuff around all day. Whereas it's, for a lot of players now, more sedentary lifestyle sitting at a desk. So that, that's quite different too. No, you're very right there. Um, when I was involved, um, I used to be collected in a, a hackney car by a, a gentleman called John Joe Quinn from Freshford, God rest him. And uh, he'd do a little round around the area. And one of the places we would call to would be Ger Henderson. Now, sometimes Ger had to, we had to hang on him who minutes because he was only after finishing milking the cows. Or he would uh, come home after a match and he'd maybe have to get into milking the cows or somebody else hadn't uh, done it. And I mean, I so admired a guy for that. I worked in... Uh, in, in, a, in an administrative role in uh, Glanby, Avonmore, as it was then. And, uh, you know, I could, I had my time off. I was able to kind of prepare like that. Jerry was out and about. Having said all of that, he, that him being a farmer came to the forefront, though, um, when Kilkenny were playing, because he was absolutely a, a man of steel. And he would put his hand and put his body up where no other person would do it. And uh, I imagine he got that from... Uh, working on the farm, so physically strong and all of that. And there was plenty of other farms as well. There'll be plenty of people will remember John Power. And I was going to ask, what, yeah. What he put in. And the day that he, he tore his hand on the wire in Croke Park and just took Dr. Cody, just wrap it up and I'll go on. And he just went on, you know, and it didn't bother him at all. So they're just two examples of players. I mean, on the other side, you had the great Tony Dorden of Wexford, um, who was a farmer as well and a man of immense strength and uh, I'd be more on the fact that maybe the, the inter-county hurling scene has is kind of very difficult for people in that space uh, to get involved anymore because of the commitment needed and equally the commitment needed on a farm, particularly if you're dairy where it's a, you know, a seven-day-a-week operation. And uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be more on the, the fact that maybe it has made it that bit more difficult for them and uh, maybe people involved in the, in the building trade as well and, and, uh, and such like. So it's, uh, it's been, that's been a big change in the whole... Um, area of inter-county now they're not there's there's still some there but not not the level and i remember actually shane after after all ireland finals if you happen to be so well even if you weren't successful the irish farmers association often held a little small function on the monday after the game acknowledging people involved in the uh, farming business and uh, generally they've done a little piece for the farmers journal and that and uh, you know though then they, they might during the course of the year a columnist there might pick the 
the, the, the 15 best hurlers of the year who were farmers and things like that, you know. So, you know, they're just some of the things that happened. I'm I'm rolling back the years here now, maybe, and listeners are getting bored, but at the same I'm time, it was, it was a, it, things were, times were different and simpler, maybe. And look, I don't know whether we enjoyed it more than the people are enjoying it today, but you didn't have the same, I suppose. The, there's a very strong process around now about your training, your diet your uh, rehabilitation and all of that. And it's part and parcel of the inter-county scene. Mm, whereas it would have been hairy bacon and watery cabbage back in the day, but sure look, times change. Well, it wasn't, it wouldn't, it wasn't. I mean, when, when we were training, I mean, our, our uh, watering hole, for want of a better word, and uh, after matches was uh, Langton's in Kilkenny, a place uh, you and Michael are very familiar with. And, you know, you uh, you got steak and chips after that now. It's, uh, now it's uh, chicken and pasta and other sort of things. So different different diets for different times and uh, you know there's there's probably a book in it for you Shane there there probably is I was just thinking there as you were talking the Irish Farmers Journal I think they did an interview with one of the Burris Lee players coming up to the All-Ireland that time Tommy Ryan Foot you know pictures out in the farm and everything like it's good out of crack and then in recent times you had Shane Fives of Waterford as a pig farmer Sean Murphy of Carlow was um uh, he was a sheep farmer and do you remember right. when Carlo gave an exhibition against Dublin a few years ago? They lost now, but they gave a very good performance on TV. In the warm-up, um, I remember chatting to Brendan Murphy about this, the other midfielder. He said they were in the warm-up in the field adjacent to uh, Dr. Cullen Park and that Sean Murphy was just lying on the ground. He was absolutely wrecked. And uh, Brendan Murphy was doing a bit of stretch with him. And he, he, Sean Murphy said, I'm absolutely wrecked. I've been shearing sheep all day. And then he still goes out and gives an absolute exhibition against Dublin. So, you know, made a different stuff, maybe. Well, that's what I say. Those those guys who were of farming stock were just men of iron who went out on the field and uh, you could always depend on them. And as I said, Jerry Henderson was one such, uh, was one. Dick O'Hara was another, in, fact, in actual fact. Two men that you wouldn't stand in their way too easily, to be honest with us. And they're just two. And probably, and probably and John Power, of course. They're just three. He had to wire as well. You know, they were, they were just outstanding players. Who could uh, who could take on anybody coming at them? 